WJBF Live Viper 6, some light showers moving east across Georgia and South Carolina tonight and for the overnight. Tomorrow morning, 7 a.m., wake up to cloudy skies, scattered showers, a chilly 45. Your forecast coming up next. But whoever is the cause of all this problem, come forward and be honest and say, I made a mistake. Prayers answer for residents in Denmark concerned over drinking water. We take you to Water Distribution Day thanks to Neighbors Helping Neighbors. We have everything you need to know about the biggest shopping day of the year, Black Friday and Cyber Monday too. And the 100 Black Men of Augusta holding its annual basketball classic. How is helping young men headed to college as your news at 11 starts right now. Live from Television Park. This is WJBF News Channel 6 at 11. I'm Sean Cabbage Stock. Thank you so much for joining us. I'm in for Brad and Jenny tonight. Coverage you can count on begins with Black Friday. As many of you found out, stores did not have a shortage of customers this Friday. And Cabela's in Augusta was no exception. We get the story from our Samantha Williams. She was there bright and early this morning. Despite the cold temperatures, people started staking their places in line at 1 a.m. this Black Friday. But just an hour later at 2 a.m., the party arrived. Bringing Christmas music, DJ Nick Campbell did not lack entertainment. We started this year. Uh, we did uh, the Christmas for Santa coming in a couple weeks ago. They actually have a, what they call a Santa workshop. And when the doors opened at 5 a.m., more than 200 people rushed in claiming items. And throughout the store, you can't miss the big Hot Wheel cars that kids drive. The hottest merchandise this year. The cars flew off the shelves first. But another popular item to buy? Clothes. Jeans for $10. You just can't hardly beat that. Yeah. I'm sure you stocked up, right? Oh, yeah, sure did. Special on the um, flake shirts, $10 a piece, and the jeans for $10. There's a few little Christmas gifts um, that are, are inexpensive and all decals for cars and then hoodie. Good deals on hoodies. But Jack Helton wasn't too interested in the clothes. He and his dad hit the sales for an early Christmas present. There's a lot of good deals I'm hearing. Jack, what'd you get today? Tell me about it. I got like a, um, it's for hunting and uh, golf. It's like a, a range finder. But before making your way to the next store, you had to conquer one more line to the cash register. Assistant manager Jason Schuler says the shop started sales early this year. Just to take a little pressure off today, still a great turnout, but Wednesday was crazy busy, which was phenomenal. We were really excited to see that. Um, so we started a lot of these deals that you see now on Wednesday. And it got to Samantha Williams, WJBF News Channel 6. And hundreds flocked to Academy Sports and Outdoors in Evans to get some great deals as well. One shopper drove all the way from Jefferson County to Evans to check out the savings. We really just wanted to get here as soon as we could, but when we got here, there was already a big line. Mm -hmm. And we're lucky when we got here when we did, because we, we looked behind us when we were walking in. It started going way past the parking lot. And local consignment stores also got into the Black Friday spirit this morning. Our Ashley Flete has that part of the story. While most people are out shopping at name brand stores, waiting in long lines, dealing with the hustle and bustle of Black Friday, Consignment stores like this one take it easy this time of year. The store manager shares there's nothing more unique than bargain hunters. Anything from antique to vintage to modern, it's mixed in. Anybody, whether it's a child to an old person, can find something in our store that's interesting to them. Bargain hunters is unlike a traditional store because vendors rent a space and make it their own. There is nothing specific about it, but the variety and options they carry are plenty. Most of the time, there's so many different kinds of things here. Brings in a lot of customers. Small businesses are valuable because they can adapt to the changing marketplace conditions and are typically service focused due to the fact they often live in the communities they serve. It's a fun place to work. We meet a lot of people. We have great vendors and wonderful consigners. We appreciate everybody that has participated with our store. So, Instead of the usual Black Friday shopping at the mall or name brand stores, Consider small businesses throughout the region, including wineries, museum gift shops, and retailers in shopping centers. They all offer a little something different to give this holiday season. In Augusta, Ashley Flette, WJBF News Channel 6. All right, Ashley, thank you. And if you missed out on the deals today, there will be more online for Cyber Monday. Now, in case you're not familiar with that term, that's when retailers offer big online savings to wrap up the shopping weekend. Shh. <laughs>
Right now, mostly cloudy skies, kind of chilly out there too, with some light showers pushing northeast across the viewing area, stretching from the lake south towards Sparta and Sandersville, lifting to the northeast. We're going to see more as we head into the overnight hours as we pull out. Look at this line of showers stretching from Huntsville to Birmingham to Montgomery, sliding our direction for the overnight and early morning tomorrow. Jiffy Loop Skyview Network at uh, I-20, make that I-520 and uh, Wrightsboro Road, Jiffy Loop Skyview Network. All is quiet. A couple of sprinkles, a cool 45, winds out of the east at 5 to 11 miles an hour. Tomorrow morning, cloudy skies, a few showers as you start your day at 8 a.m., a couple sprinkles remaining at 10 and mostly cloudy. We should be dry by noon and 56 degrees, winds northwest at 5. More on your weekend forecast coming up in a second. Sean? All right, George, thank you. Authorities in Orangeburg County, South Carolina, searching for the two people they say crashed a truck through a store. The incident happened this morning just before four at a Dollar General in North. We're told the suspects were trying to use the truck to remove an ATM from the store. No word on whether if they were successful or not. Call police if you have any information. A small earthquake has been reported outside of Plainville in Gordon County. The 2.7 magnitude quake was reported about seven miles west of Calhoun in northwest Georgia. Emergency management officials say no injuries or damage were reported. A little closer to home, a local organization's goal of being positive role models for young boys. Our Devin Johnson is in the studio tonight with that story. And Devin, the 100 black men of Augusta's basketball tournament helped boys when it's time to go to college, right? This tournament does a lot of great things for the community. Not only does the members benefit from it, but the basketball players and the coaches get excited about playing in the annual tourney. 25 years of dunks, layups, and three-pointers. The 100 Black Men of Augusta celebrates its annual Thanksgiving basketball tournament. It officially tips off the basketball season in the River Region. James Quarles tells me the tournament helps boys in the program to have male role models. And I felt well about what we we're trying to do as members of the 100 in reference to mentoring our kids. And of course, this has been a number one fundraiser that we we every year has its progress. It really has. 20 plus years, teams from Augusta dribbled their way in support of the 100 Black Men's Inc.'s goal. Coral says it's important for the 40 boys in the program to have a male presence by their side. And that's one thing that we try to focus on having a male image that they can live up to, as well as be able to um, assist them in going to college by the time they roll around to be seniors. Evans High School head coach Kevin Kenny has been coaching basketball for more than 20 years. Coach Kenny says he brings his players to the tournament every year because it helps students get scholarships and the competition the tournament brings. <laughs> An event that started as a fundraiser to help young boys in the program is now the River Region's prestige basketball tournament. The 100 Black Men of Augusta Sports Chairman says he's glad to give back to the community. We are right now three times the amount that we started out in 1994 in reference to being able to give our seniors something to help them attend college. Course, it can't be all of it, but it's something that helps them out as a scholarship when they finish our program their senior year. The 100 Black Men of Augusta basketball tournament will continue tomorrow at Glen Hills High School. The events will include the principal free throw contest, a three-point contest, and a slam dunk contest. Back to you. As some sad news to report tonight, the founder and owner of the Houston Texans has died. Bob McNear was 81 years old. The team did not immediately release the cause of death, but says he died peacefully with his wife Janice and family by his side. Animals on their way from the river region to the great northwest. A closer look at Operation Freedom Ride when News Channel 6 at 11 continued.
Disappointed? No, not really. Yeah, I'm sure. <laughs> no, it's not. Yes, sir, I'm sure. Now, your most accurate forecast with WJBF Live Viper 6 in partnership with AECOM, built to deliver a better world. Right now, cloudy skies, light showers, downtown Augusta, 45 degrees, winds east at 11 miles an hour. On our Jiffy Loop Skyview network, uh, you see to our west, uh, a boundary producing rainfall from Alabama north into Tennessee, rolling our direction for tomorrow. Uh, actually, during the overnight hours, starting at midnight tomorrow, we'll see this push into western Georgia, then roll across the News Channel 6 viewing area during the early morning hours. But fortunately, most of this should be out of here as we head towards early Saturday morning. So by 10, 11 o'clock, we should be dry. Right now, clouds and some light showers across our western counties. Forecast tonight, hit and miss showers during the overnight, 4 a.m., rain rolling through. As you wake up tomorrow at 8, a couple showers remaining. Then it pretty much lifts out by 10 o'clock with mostly cloudy skies to partly cloudy conditions to wrap up the day. As we head towards Sunday, partly cloudy conditions and dry all day long. Then as we head towards Monday, a next frontal boundary comes in, but it will be dry ushering in cooler air and lots of sunshine to push us through Monday. Forecast looks like this. Tomorrow morning, clouds, a few showers and 45 degrees. Cloudy at noon and 56. A little bit of sunshine by 4 o'clock. Highs pushing to 60. Partly cloudy at 8 p.m. and 51. Winds out of the northwest at 5 miles an hour. And the seven-day forecast. Partly sunny sky Sunday and 68. Partly sunny Monday and 62. Sunshine for Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. Highs will be in the 50s. And as we head towards Friday, look for a chance for showers and 59 degrees. Sean, there's a quick look at our weekend weather. All right. Thank you so much, George. Sure. And two stores are making sure residents have clean water for the holiday season. It's Water Distribution Day in Denmark, South Carolina. Details on the other side of this break.
And welcome back. While many of you were in lines for Black Friday deals, residents in Denmark, South Carolina were in line for clean drinking water. I went there today where residents were simply overjoyed by the generosity of others. We do have a problem. In Denmark, South Carolina. This morning when I got up, my water in my bathroom was a little rust and it hasn't been for a long time. 80-year-old Ella Breland is proud of her native Bamberg County. But I was born in the city, little town of Ola. But one thing she's not proud of is the water in the city after she says it caused her clothes to be ruined. $50 blouse gone down the drain and I was never able to wear that blouse but once. She's one of the dozens of residents of Denmark who came out to water distribution day at Denmark Furniture. This after two local Walmart stores donated nearly 20 pallets of water Wednesday evening. Angels came from above when Walmart brought that truck in town Wednesday night. When you have a heart to help people and a heart to get answers and you get answers and then you, you, you see the need, you just start making phone calls. And that's what I did. Helen Jeffrey is another one. I've been buying water for years. I don't drink the water. Volunteers took water from the loading docks to the cars of eager residents. But I appreciate they giving us some clean water today. For former Representative Bakari Sellers, he felt an obligation to help. I mean, anytime you can, I'm related to half the people and I uh, served this area for a very long period of time. And so for me, this is home and this is what you're supposed to do. And it's never going to be enough, I mean, until the city fixes their water. But we wanted it, at least a few people over the holidays to have a chance to not have to worry about this issue. And it's the kindness and generosity of strangers that Breland is proud of this holiday season. And I'm so happy that we had the opportunity to come pick it up freely, you know. And more than 500 people showed up. And if you missed distribution day today, another one will be held Wednesday, November 28th. That will be from 5 until 6 o'clock at Denmark Furniture Store. I have that information at WJBF.com. One person is dead and two others injured tonight following a shooting at a mall in Alabama. Authorities say shots rang out inside the River Chase Gallery or Mall after a fight broke out between two teenagers. We've learned the gunman opened fire and shot an 18-year-old twice in the chest. The gunman ran and that's when a police officer fatally shot him. A 12-year-old girl was also struck by gunfire, but it's unclear tonight by whom. Officers say there was already a heavy police presence at the mall in preparation for Black Friday shoppers and that could have saved lives. Volunteers in Project Freedom Rides sending dogs from Augusta to new homes in Washington State. The transport team up bright and early loading up and heading to the northwest. Our West Cooper was there and has the story. I am very happy for these dogs. The seven-year-old Roman McCon thinks these dogs deserve better. Animals don't deserve a life in a kennel. So he's been involved in many animal operations to help. I don't have a paperwork card. Last week he earned the American Society for the Prevention of Cruelty to Animals Kid of the Year Award. Kids like him that want yeah. to be proactive, they can make a change. So that's important. Over 25 dogs at Augusta Animal Services are making their trek to find their place in a family. It's all a part of Operation Freedom Ride. This is our first transport from Augusta to Idaho and Washington. McCon says at Southern Animal Shelters, overpopulation is a big issue. These dogs are going to be overlooked left and right here, so might as well get them somewhere they can find a family. They need pets and they want pets and there's a shortage of pets available. You might think the more than 2,000 mile journey to the Pacific Northwest is noisy. They quiet them down and let you get moving down the road. It's when you're sitting still that they're so loud. But this semi-loud ride couldn't be more helpful for Augusta Animal Services. We will have uh, 20 cages free. We have several dogs that are um, double kenneled. Yeah. And so it's terrific to be able to open up that many kennels and uh, be able to take in owner surrenders, strays, give them a little bit more space. It's just terrific all in one shot. That's great. And may all these dogs find loving families. Oh, my Reporting in Augusta, I'm Wes Cooper for WJBF News Channel 6. All right, Wes, thank you. And coming up next in sports, a busy night of high school football playoffs. Sports director Brendan Robertson is in next with all the scores and highlights. You're watching your news at 11 on WJBF News Channel 6.
Now, sports coverage you can count on. Week 15 of the high school football season, we are in the quarterfinals of the state playoffs in Georgia and South Carolina. Seven area teams still alive chasing state championships. The only home team was Jefferson County hosting Rockmark, the Georgia 2A quarterfinals. Winner of this could meet Waco in the semifinals. We'll show you that game next. Yellow Jackets averaging 47 per game this season, already up 14 0 in the second when Dylan Bailey hooks up with Juke Boozer. Definitely on the all time all name team. Six more for Rockmart made a 21 0. Warriors get on the board and soon possession Jaden Jenkins. Border Bowl and Georgia Southern bound, but not before punching in his 30th rushing score of the year. Pulls Jefferson County back within 14 21 7. But just before the half, the Yellow Jackets strike again. Bailey, thrown for more than 1,200 yards, finds Zabrian Watley, made it 28 7. Rockmart picks up where it left off in the third quarter. More scoring. A great season for Jefferson County ends in the quarterfinals, 48-13. Bottom half of that bracket I told you about, Washington County on the road against Callaway. Early in the first, Callaway's defense coming up big. Jalen Shepard forced to fumble on the second play of the game, and on the next drive, Dee Bonner gets the interception to get the Cavs going. Ensuing drive early in the second. Demarcus Coleman, he's going to find Marcus Mormon on the crossing route. That's not it. After a Washington County touchdown, Coleman fires it deep and finds it in. That is not that play. Here we go. After Washington County touchdown, Coleman goes deep, finds Jacob Freeman. That is a 60-yard touchdown and a little pose to go with it. Made it 14-7 Callaway at that point. Callaway cruises over Washington County tonight, 35-20 to the final. In South Carolina, Class 4A quarterfinals. North Augusta on the road against a high-powered Hartsfield team. First quarter, Clemson commit to Monte Capehart with a stick in the backfield for Hartsville. Big play for the Foxes. Then on special teams, Justin Abraham blocking the punt for Hartsville. They take over on the one-yard line. Very next play, Tyon Evans goes in to make it 7-0 in favor of Hartsville. Second quarter, again, it's Evans. Again, he keeps it himself around the left side to the house. And that made it 15-0. Hartsville crushes North Augusta tonight. 35 to nothing. the final. Barnwell, the bottom half of the 2A bracket on the road against Timberland. Craig Pender trying for something, but gets stuffed. Timberland's Daquan Gleason makes him stop, but then the Warhorses get going. Pender rolls right fives to Khalil Johnson. Takes off, stop just short of the goal line. They ruled him down before the fumble later on. Pender dropping back, finds Brandon Harvey Jr. for the tutty. Barnwell quickly taking the lead over the Wolves. Timberland now back to punt. Oh, wait, no, they're not. A little fake. They dump it off to Dakari Win, but it falls incomplete. So Barnwell ball again, and Pender again going to find Khalil Johnson. And again, he gets close, but would just be stopped short of the end zone. But it wasn't a problem. Dalion Creech would finish that run off. And the War Horses, third straight year going to the lower state championship. The semifinals, essentially, they win 35-6. They will host Carver's Bay next week. All right, Carver's Bay, speaking of, taking on Bamberg Earhart. So this one, obvious, the winner would take on Barnwell. Fourth quarter, less than eight to go. Carver's Bay down 7-2. Janez Sumter going to roll the right, cuts back left, throws a long ball, and finds Stefan Green in the end zone. Bears take the 8-7 lead after a costly missed extra point. Bamberg Earhart gets a short touchdown run with 2.32 left in the fourth, but Carver's Bay going to answer 30 seconds later. Sumter finds Green again for another long touchdown pass. Bears actually go for two and miss after a Red Raider penalty, so we go to overtime. Tied at 14. Bamberg Earhart with the ball. They get another short touchdown run. A.J. Williams makes it 21-14 on the QB sneak. Carver's Bay, their turn now. Sumter doing a lot more. Scrambles again. He would find Green in the end zone for the third time. Carver's Bay makes it 21-20, and they're going to go for two for the win. So this is the play to decide the season for both teams, and we already know how it turns out because Bamberg Earhart has a tremendous season come to an end. Carver's Bay gets the win in overtime, 22-21. Saluda on the road against Southside Christian. Top half of that 2A bracket. Southside Christian, one of the best teams in the state. They give it to Mallory Pinckney, and he's gone. The Sabres take a 7-0 lead. Back comes Saluda. Noah Bell going to the air, but a bad break here. Goes off the receiver's hands into the hands of J.R. Schroeder for the pick. And the Sabres capitalize. J.W. Hertzberg going to find Lucas Raber for the touchdown. Saluda would get on the board late, but they fall 34 
to 21. And real quick, Wagner Sally, their historic season would come to an end as well. They fall 37 17 to Lamar in Class A. Lamar, the number one team in Class A. Congrats to them. And another quick final score Edmund Burke falls to Terrell Academy. And we will be right back after this.